So what are NFTs, where to find them, how to create your own or how to buy one? Well, let's explain. I've been covering this sector for quite some time now, but there is so much development and innovation happening all the time that uh, I feel that it's time to give an up-to-date breakdown of it. And uh, in fact, the NFT industry grew by more than 300% in 2020 alone. And in the first two months of this year, we've seen exponential growth of this market. So clearly this is the year of NFTs, which is why we need to discuss them in more simple language for those who are not too tech savvy. And uh, this is what I'm dedicating this episode of Crypto Corner to. So let's begin first with explaining what is an NFT. Uh, I know that uh, you probably have heard it already. And if, if this is uh, the first video you're watching about NFTs, I have to mention it. But otherwise, you've probably already seen it. It is it means non-fungible token and non-fungible, however weird that sounds, it basically refers to the fact that it is unique. It is not interchangeable with another token. It's not equal to another token. For instance, uh, uh, the first digital tokens were uh, related to currencies, right? You know, with the first digital cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, this is uh, designed to be a currency. So units of that uh, of that currency are equal to each one. One Bitcoin equals another one Bitcoin. So if I have one Bitcoin and you have one Bitcoin, it, you know, it's the same. We have the same value. Smaller units of that Bitcoin are also equal to other small units, like one Satoshi, the smallest uh, spendable unit of Bitcoin. One Satoshi of my Bitcoin is equals your one Satoshi of your Bitcoin. Or if we give an example with the uh, traditional currencies, one dollar equals another one dollar bill. It doesn't matter, you know, wh who has it. And a five dollar bill equals another five dollar bill or equals five one dollar bills because they represent the same value the same uh, qualities so um, these are interchangeable tokens and they're fungible so currencies generally are fungible with these tokens you have qualities and uh, specific data and uh, you know or whatever it is that it will consist of whether it will be an image or uh, or something else it is unique to that token, therefore it is not interchange. it doesn't equal another one, unless you produce multiples. But, you know, generally, my NFT that I will produce is not going to be equal to an NFT that you will produce. And therefore, we refer to them as non-fungible. And tokens is because they're actually created as digital data, and also they run on smart contracts, which is a facility from uh, the blockchain basically facilitates smart contracts. The Ethereum blockchain was uh, the first one to actually create smart contracts that can be built on that network. It's basically applications or uh, any any type of digital data that actually performs actions that are pre-programmed and that's why they're called smart contracts but this is the technical side of it you don't have to understand it in order to create an nft or even buy and sell nfts you don't have to understand uh, the whole technical side so i'm going to try and keep the technicalities to a minimum so let's explain what are these uh, nfts can be art they can be music or they can be collectibles uh, real estate sports fantasy football gaming and just about everything it's almost impossible to keep track on the latest nft developments uh, as i'm speaking right now there is something new happening with this industry but to name just a few the most famous artwork recently sold as nft uh, is the one of people called every days the first five thousand days which which is basically a collage of all of his works that the artist has posted every day since 2007 on his website. This just fetched almost 70 million at an auction at Christie's and it was bought by an NFT fund owner. The musician Grimes sold an NFT bundle for $6 million and an NFT tweet from Mark Cuban sold for $952. While the first tweet by Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, is priced at 
to a half million dollars. Even Lindsay Lohan has minted an NFT, and the band Kings of Leon dropped their NFT version of the new of the latest album. Uh, there's also tickets sold for live gigs as NFTs, and the list goes on and on and on. Crypto Kitties, one of the original NFTs, generated four hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars in sales in the past week alone, according to Non Fungible. These digital cats, which were developed by a startup called Dapper Lab were once so popular they actually clogged up the Ethereum network. They, they they created so many transactions that Ethereum network was going to collapse. Also, NBA Top Shot, which is also created by Dapper Labs in partnership with the Basketball League, attracted $147 million in sales in the last week alone, according to NFT data tracker CryptoSlam. And this is a service that lets users buy and sell short clips showing much highlights from the top basketball players, such as this one you're seeing right now on the screen. This is a video highlight featuring LeBron James, and it recently sold for $208,000. While CryptoPunks is the most popular series of gaming art, it was released by developers Larva Labs in 2017, but uh, it's really boomed in popularity lately, generating $45 million in sales volume in the last week alone, according to the website Non-Fungible again. Also, this one, on the 19th of February, this animated GIF of Neon Cat, a popular 2011 meme, sold for more than half a million dollars. And just a week ago, the whole world was shook by the $69.3 million auction for the Beeple's artwork, which brought the interest in NFTs to the mainstream. The first popular NFTs were in fact gaming tokens. Yes, indeed, there are already games that actually let you have NFTs as items. And these were the first popular ones. Some even sell virtual plots of land as NFTs. And the most expensive NFT prior to that Christie's auction was exactly a plot of land by one of these games. It was over a million dollars worth and I mentioned it in a previous episode of Crypto Corner. Uh, the metaverses sector, this is where the games are, is still the biggest use case for NFTs and with the highest volume according to the latest statistics. I actually featured here on this channel one of these games, one of the new ones that are part of the metaverses sector. It's called OVR and they also offer virtual land and it's still new and the prices of lands are still affordable and their currency, their native token OVR has tripled in price since I featured it on this channel. This is a utility token that is used as a currency inside the game and it also powers the whole ecosystem of the OVR and uh, this is an augmented reality game project where you can create all kinds of experiences on the virtual lands that you own. You can even create live entertainment for instance and you can charge people tickets to enter that and uh, all kinds of things. Basically you have an opportunity to create a business in a virtual reality world that you can run from home and you can earn real money with it. There's already so many people who have made tons of money this way ever since uh, they first started with Second Life. On top of that, you can simply just buy and sell these pieces of land or maybe just rent them out to other users so you can make a profit passively. The opportunities are endless and you can find my interview with their co-founder in my video and learn more about this project. Uh, the video is dedicated entirely to OVR and I will drop the link in the description below as well. Also, with the prices for collectible NFTs soaring and reaching millions of dollars these days, owning just a portion of a piece of digital art is also possible. It's a new approach and it's becoming more and more uh, appealing now to collectors. And this is a concept called Fractional Non-Fungible Tokens, FNFTs which was originally conceived in 2018 as a way to offer shared ownership. There's already some services that provide such shared ownership for selected works and now I just saw news about a new DEX decentralized exchange that is forked from Uniswap and which will be exclusively focused on trading F NFTs. 
It uh, has launched actually on the 16th of March, so just a few days ago, and it's called DAOFI and it's designed to solve the liquidity problem in secondary markets for NFTs. This is basically uh, a way to uh, be able to buy uh, a piece of a digital art that is probably costing millions and you can maybe just uh, put $200 in it and then you have many owners sharing that uh, ownership and sometimes you can even lend or you know, loan your, your personal uh, piece of that uh, f whole piece of art to the other users and then you, you know, some of these users will be renting all of the pieces of art in order to display it all together. There's so many opportunities, guys. It is getting crazy. And if you're just getting into the NFT trend, you're not too late yet. If you're a creator, artist, musician, photographer, video producer, or any public figure for that matter, you might want to get in on the NFT train because this digital format is allowing content creators to actually own the property rights for what they create, which allows them to profit from it in different ways, which they can't do with physical art, especially when it comes to receiving royalties from resales. With NFTs, you can actually set up your fee for the future when your work changes owners. So every time someone sells it to a new owner, you get your cut from that sale. We don't know if uh, this really is just a trend or a form of digital ownership that will become some sort of a norm one day, but with everything else becoming more and more digitized these days and uh, people making crazy money from crypto and digital collectibles, it makes sense to at least test the waters and maybe get your feet wet a little bit. So let's see what are the usual places where these unique tokens are created, sold and traded for both artists or content creators and for those who are on the collector's side. Well, creating your work as NFT artwork, whether it be a GIF or an image or a video, is relatively straightforward and um, it doesn't require extensive knowledge of the crypto industry. NFT artwork can also be used to create collectibles like sets of digital cards. And before you start, you will need to decide on which blockchain you want to issue your NFTs on. Ethereum is currently the leading blockchain service for NFTs issuance. However, uh, there is a range of other blockchains that are becoming increasingly popular, including Binance Smart Chain, Flow by Dapper Labs, Tron, EOS as well, Polkadot, Tezos, Cosmos, Wax, Sys even, and now Cardano is also just getting in this space. So there's going to be more and more choice very soon. Each blockchain has its own separate NFT token standard. Also, they have their own compatible wallet services and marketplaces. For instance, if you create NFTs on top of the Binance Smart Chain, you will only be able to sell them on platforms that support Binance Smart Chain assets. This means you wouldn't be able to sell them on something like VIF3, which is a Flow blockchain-based marketplace, or OpenSea, which is an Ethereum-based NFT marketplace. As I mentioned, some games operate with collectible NFTs and uh, one of them is Blockchain Cuties Universe, which is the first one to offer NFTs built on five different blockchains. I also covered this project in a separate video a few months ago, just before they launched their own currency token, which has also doubled, uh, more than doubled even, in price since I featured them and it's getting now listed on more exchanges now, so you can also go and check out this project, I will drop the link in the description as well. But back to being an NFT creator and what you need to get started. Besides having some digital works ready, in any format you choose, it can be JPEG, GIF, MP4, MP3, .mov, uh, so on, so on. And the next step will be to find a website which gives you the tools to turn this into a non-fungible token. Some of the websites where you can sell your NFTs provide you with these tools to create them. Others would allow you to submit works that you have already created with a third party, with a different website. So there's plenty of options. I will list here the most popular websites that provide services for creator as well as for buyers of NFTs.
Most of these are currently operating on Ethereum, just for now, but the space is getting crowded and more blockchains are joining in. So pretty soon, I, I wouldn't be surprised if these same uh, websites start allowing you to uh, create and sell on different blockchains rather than just on Ether. And you will have a much bigger choice, so you can avoid paying the high Ether fees that are charged at the point of minting your smart contract. Uh, wait, what? There's fees? Well, yes, <laughs> to create an NFT, you are technically creating a token that runs on a smart contract and it has metadata embedded in it, plus some rules on how to operate and what data it can store and all of these things. So all of these are possible via the self-executing smart contracts. And uh, when creating or selling such a piece, you are executing transactions on the blockchain, which is uh, powering these smart contracts that is that these smart contracts are built on. Ethereum is, uh, you know, the most popular chain with the most transactions currently. So this results in a huge volume of transactions that are executed every second on the Ethereum blockchain, which means that the fees for these transactions have skyrocketed to an all time high right now, unfortunately. And this is also why we read about various proposals for scaling solutions and hopefully soon we will see this implemented but in but in the meantime you must be prepared to pay between maybe 50 to 80 dollars sometimes even more for executing a smart contract like that uh, some websites do not charge you to uh, create your nfts but they will charge you for listing them for sale and other operations as well OpenSea is currently one of these websites that gives you the freedom to create for free and it's also the biggest marketplace currently. You can create simple works or series of works and you can even sell multiple copies of the same work. Another one is Nifty Gateway which strives to be more accessible to buyers by allowing them to use a credit card to purchase items off-site. Platforms like Zora operate as invite only while Raribo and Mintable allow any user to upload and sell images and text as NFTs on the website. Another popular one is Super Rare. They prefer mostly one-offs and they also curate their artists. So you have to apply to become one of their artists. Well, this is similar to the conventional art world where galleries work with selected artists only and they become their official representatives. Other popular platforms to sell your NFTs are Foundation, Axie Marketplace, Bakery Swap, NFT Showroom, Viv3 I mentioned, cargo and uh, there's even more you will find the links to all of this in this article of my blog crypto-corner.com and i will drop the link to it in the description as well now these are my own nfts that i created already and i'm about to list them on OpenSea for a start then i will add more to the other platforms let me know what are your thoughts on this do you like them are you going to buy one of those well buyers get in touch or just head over to their listings and grab them before i become super famous that's the game isn't it you can find them linked in the description as well well this is everything from me for this video i hope it gave you some more clarity on what are nfts and how to get started with them how you can create your own nfts by the way i forgot to mention that you will need to have for now if you're going to create them on ethereum blockchain and i assume you will be doing that because the most websites are offering uh, ethereum based nfts uh, you will also need to have a metamask wallet and metamask is an application uh, it's sort of an extension on your google chrome or brave browser if if you're using Brave, I suggest that you use Brave browser because it is more secure and privacy orientated. And I have the link in the description as well. I'm using Brave. So you will need to have some Ether in your Ethereum wallet, ideally MetaMask, because with OpenSea and many of the other websites, all you need to do is just link your MetaMask wallet once you land on the website in order to create your NFT. I will most likely dedicate a separate episode specifically as a tutorial on how to create your NFT. But these are the things that you will need in order to get started. It is quite intuitive, um, but if you are completely new to NFTs and you, you really don't know where to begin and you are new to crypto and you don't even know how to get your first Ethereum either, uh, then uh, catch my next episode because not next one but the, the follow-up to this one where i will explain exactly how to create your nft 
Well, this is everything. Thanks for staying until the end. If you liked the video, give me the thumbs up and leave a comment below. Also share it with someone else who would benefit from watching it. And make sure that you subscribe to this channel and you catch my other episodes where I will continue the topic of NFTs and give you more updates and everything that is new in this industry. I'm, I'm sure we will be talking a lot about NFTs throughout this year and the next ones.